It's that time again for EverQuest Next Into the Portal. Your hosts for this evening are... Geek Domo. Box 6 Time. And Trend Day. Let's get to the show right about now. Hello, everybody. And, of course, we have Tobran right there. Here in the middle. In the middle. Yeah. Middle spot. And Legendary Neurotoxin has gone into the lower corner over there. Yep. How's it going, everybody? So, welcome to EverQuest Next Into the Portal and EverQuest Next Discussion. We have absolutely nothing to talk about this week, so um, the show is going to be about 10 I seconds. Are we online? What? Yeah. It's supposed to be. It's not coming off of mine. It's just taking a while to come up. Yeah, yeah. way to interrupt. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry, guys. That's why you're in the middle. <laughs> or just like circle a shave around me. Yeah. No, we'll wait for a second. Make sure let's make sure it's working. But I think we're okay. Everybody else can see it. I can see it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. We're good. I'm uh, still in Advil. Yeah, we're good ads this time of year, though. These ads make these guys lots and lots of money. Not me. Not EverQuest Next. Not EQ Nexus. That's Twitch. Twitch. Twitch is making money. All right. So people are saying they can see us. Okay, good. All right. So moving All right. on. Moving on. All right. I should have waited a little bit. I guess I don't know. Uh, yeah. So we have nothing to talk about this week. So the show is going to be two seconds long and. Nothing. Nothing. Be careless. Okay, see you later. Thanks a lot. <laughs> see ya. No, actually, we actually have lots to talk about this week, unlike a lot of weeks. So it's really exciting. Oh, we do. Yes. Oh, well, then I'll stop reading Fall of Bastion. Then. Oh, this <laughs> You're so bad, trending. So bad. All right. So uh, how's everybody doing? I'm doing good. I think. Um, absolutely fantastic, Domo. Thanks for asking. It's good to be here with everyone. Hey, everyone in chat. You're all beautiful. And we are sans estrogen today. Oh, well. Maybe next time. Maybe next time. <laughs> I guess we couldn't get food to do it. And Meka, even though we raised 10 million pennies on uh, Kickstarter to get Meka on the show this week, she flat out refused. But we have something in the works that we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about it now. Okay, so here's the plan, everybody. Ready? Everyone's More ready? More right. This is going to be great. This is going to get make on the show and all these other people, too. Okay, here we go. Blackmail. No. <laughs> no? Oh. This game, EverQuest Next Landmark. I'm going Never to... Heard of it. I, yes. It's a good new... It's a new game. It's coming out just for PC gamers. When? <laughs> Soon. And mm. it's going to... I'm going to build an amphitheater like the Circus Maximus. Okay? It's going to be a big amphitheater and then we're going to put our little studio at the end of the amphitheater and all of us are going to be in character doing into the portal with a live studio audience of at least a million people and we'll have chariot races and gladiator events and stuff like that too of course that sounds pretty awesome does it not that sound great like, that sounds like exactly the kind of con community driven in-game event that landmark needs <laughs> everyone will be want to be. Everyone will want to be part of it. Exactly. Well, we're gonna. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a pit around us that's twenty thousand stories deep that has a slow, like really slow staircase that spirals up it, so that when people try to jump up on stage and get into the show, they'll fall into the pit of doom, and then they have to climb back out. That'll keep people off of the show. Trendane's shaking hmm. his head. No. What, what? What do you want, Trendane? You want something a little more cozy? No, I'm not saying that. It's just, you say we're all gonna be, you know, in, in our in our characters. And I don't think that's likely to happen for me. Why? Because we are on that. Because confirmed only humans, and you will not get to be your your kitty cat. And and Trendane is a professional. And let's be honest, we can't afford him. Mm, yes, <laughs> he's a professional something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess we can get on with the show. I could get into a different character, but just not mine. Okay. Well, one of the characters that you're works. naming for the people that donated. Oh, real quick. Uh, do you want to do a real quick update about your PC? 
No. Yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, Some people were asking in chat earlier. So do you yeah. Like, yeah. Hell with them. I don't care. Uh, okay. No, that's not true. I do care. I care very much. What? Uh, how do you already have Fall of Bastion? I don't have it memorized. I was just sorry. I was just, never mind. We'll, we'll save that for the Q and A <laughs> section. Nice. Um, so I called Central Computer this morning to say, guys, where is my machine? <laughs> and um, they said, who is this? And, uh, <laughs> I am Trendane. You, you should know this. I came in there first thing Monday morning. I stayed up all night. Not that I wasn't all, up all night anyway. But you know, just, I was sleep deprived because I usually would have been asleep by then. To come in there and talk to Chris, that, that cute little Asian guy that helped me pick out all the pieces and parts for my machine. Mm -hmm. And he said it would be done in like three or four days at the most. And here it is on Friday. Where is my machine? <laughs> um, it is currently undergoing stress tests, which is uh, basically they put it all together and they say, okay, let's push it as far and as hard as we can because when they give it to me, there's a 90-day warranty that guarantees that it will be okay. So they put it through its paces to make sure that it will be okay, lest I come back there and eat them all. And um, so I should have it tomorrow morning. I want to do a moment of silence for Trendane's old PC. This is the last show, knock on wood, that he will do from this PC. It has been a good one. It has lasted 27 years. <laughs> Is built with abacus beads. <laughs> yeah, the way the Brits do. <laughs> I don't know. Is that a proper salute? Yeah. Not in in the US, it is. <laughs> to, to the corner of your glasses or your yeah. your your brim of your your hat. But you guys do it this way. I was drinking with some Navy guys once, and they do it down. Yeah, you do it yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. I was drinking with some Army guys, and they sort of they sort of do it like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Up the you, mean, you mean like that? Like, mm. like is that? No, that's, is that? Is that's that? more like Madonna. Madonna. <laughs> Madonna. Uh, it is Friday say, the thirteenth. That's an odd way to salute something, but I don't know. I'm I'm on the complete polar opposite side. I can't wait to get rid of an old piece of equipment and get the new one. My last laptop. Oh, I I almost bought a new weapon just to strike it with. It's <laughs> I, I hate it that much. Nice broadsword. All right, so I guess we get started with the show. Thank you for the update, Trendane. Let's uh, get rolling here. We got so much stuff to talk about this week, so let's get started. First off, the moddable UI response, and then we'll talk about the starting zone question that they just uh, came up with. So, what, do you, what are you guys' thoughts on the moddable UI? Because we beat it up pretty badly on the show. I mean, we we said we didn't like the whole yeah the whole moddable <laughs> UI thing. What do you guys think? Well, I think. Go Sorry, ahead. no. No, go ahead. Lock. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> so Lock, what do you think? think? I'll throw it at Lock first. I think during this discussion and something that I, I think I got a bit wrong when we were talking about it before is we need to compartmentalize the idea of a moddable UI and a game design um, that makes certain mods uh, beneficial to have. Like a lot of responses, like after we were going on about recount, mm -hmm. people were saying, oh, but recount's good because it makes the game easier. And, I mean, that's annoying, number one, but <laughs> second, it's like, if your game is designed in such a way where all you need to know is, like, who is doing how much damage at what rate, uh, to me, that's not, in my personal opinion, that's not how games should really be being designed at the moment. Like, you shouldn't have someone whose sole purpose is to just have the maximum d damage output they possibly, they possibly can, you know, uh, forgetting everything, everything else entirely. Like, to me, that's not... That's not how games should be. That's not an engaging way of going about combat. So, you know, if we if we want to talk about, like, moddable UI, I think it's important to think of it in terms of, you know, how uh, EverQuest Next is being designed and, you know, what mods that we've become familiar with, like Omen, be useless without mm -hmm. traditional threat. Recount, if damage isn't the be-all and end-all, you know, you can, you can measure certain things, but if, you know if the roles are kind of split and combat's a lot more dynamic, you know, how useful is that really going to be when different things can happen within within the same fight? Deadly boss mods, you know, it's something like that useless. would be useless. Yeah. Exactly, so Auctioneer. I suppose the, the fundamental design of EverQuest Next solves a lot of problems that we have um, with mods as we know them. Um, so that's, <laughs> that's my first point. Would someone else like to, like to go? Yeah, I mean, multiple UIs, um, the way they talked about wanting to take the best ideas and mods that have been made from the community and kind of incorporating those ideas into 
the um, the the official package and what's going to be available this is a pretty smart way to go because that means we've got the more advanced players who are working on the mods and the best and brightest ones can then be looped back into the game in the uh, the official EQN and even landmark so that um, everybody will have access to it you know just as a default feature so all the more basic players will be able to utilize these things and you know one again one of the things they said that's really important is that um, it's it's not going to offer certain information it's th going to be very limited in what we're actually going to do so I don't think it's going to be a moddable UI as much in the way of like you know some of those crazy World of Warcraft ones where you can see all the nodes and everything on the mini-map but more the type and that they even cited that as an example of something they don't want but um, something more along the lines of just changing the layout and aesthetics and maybe changing like uh, having a little timer on all your abilities so you know how long the cooldowns are before the next use or even uh, counter so you know how many times you can use that based on whatever limited resources mana you know rage or whatever uh, before you won't be able to use it again so there's a lot of other things that modable UIs would be able to provide players to improve their gameplay experience and provide them extra information where they need it where it wouldn't really be adding any extra information or you know require a violation of the you know the kind of information they're actually offering to actually do something effective so a lot of um you know a lot of options will be available and it should be pretty good Tobrin what are your thoughts yes. I don't know. I've had loads of experience with different moddable UIs, or moddable in some cases. But the ones that just seem to work are the ones that aren't complex, like in World of Warcraft, seeing all the nodes in the minimaps. They're just the ones that are just small additions that don't really add much, but they're just for the personal use. Like, maybe... I can't think of it at the top of my head, but not <laughs> the point. One, one example for that, one of my favorite Warcraft mods was just, um, I found one that just sold all your junk items yeah. automatically every time you went yeah. to a vendor. One of the and first ones I installed install when I reinstalled. Yep. Every time you went to a repair. Sorry, Tober and Curry. But you see what I mean? That's exactly the point. They're the ones you enjoy. They're the ones you like. They don't add much to the game, but they're definitely the best. And honestly, if I just had loads of them, I'd be more than happy. Like, that's it to me. What do we, so. what do we think? We we talk we talk a lot, you know, as as a community as a, as a whole, and, and as a show as well about kind of creating a world where interactions between people matter. And I, I do I do wo I do worry to some extent about, you know, if they try and create systems that are built around that. You know, they want us to kind of inhabit this world and like be important within the world. But if you have certain mobs, you reduce the amount of <clears throat> interaction. That you need to have with the world, and everything just gets streamlined, and it's all—it's always about efficiency in an MMO. And it, you know, I think a lot of designing an MMO, the way I look at it, is trying to stop people from taking the optimum path constantly. You know, trying to like spread people out a little bit more. And it, it is a worry, you know, that with with these mods come, you know, it come an increased attachment from the world as a whole. So I mean, that's. That's probably the only thing I'd worry about, but who knows what will happen, you know, once once the modders get, get hold of it and how see about, what they can do. How about you, Trendane? What are your thoughts on this? You played a lot of WoW, right? I did. Yeah. I've seen some I of did. your videos, yeah. Um, so, you for think? me, I mean, very much like what you were talking about, Locke, uh, was um, uh, the, the, the bag mods. You know, some of them are very, very nice. I mean, utilitarian mods is one thing, but, like, ones that that alter um the the core mechanics of gameplay like like what we've seen with recount and everything it's you you've gone from playing a game to you know playing now number. yeah exactly you you might as well play eve it's like okay it's going to be a spreadsheet now mm -hmm. you know it's like am, am am i getting the highest you know, the, there was it's the best comparison that i can come up with it right for this second is when they went from D&D uh, &D version 3.5 to 4.0, and 4.0 was all about numbers and and all this other stuff, and all of the soul had been sucked out of it. Mm -hmm. There was there was a, a post somewhere, and I cannot find it anymore. It was something about uh, some, like, um, not, not like an old god, but like some kind of a sea monster sort of thing. And it was the, the, the comparison of the attacks 
in 3.5 versus 4.0. And 4.0 was, you know, it does this many D6 of this thing with this thing to this unless blah, 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 blah. The 3.5 was, you know, it sweeps this monstrous tentacle across. It was this beautiful, vivid, rich, you know, you mm. could, it was, it was, there was a visceralness to it. It wasn't clinical. And that's what I really like. My, my favorite mods for, for World of Warcraft were all RP mods. They allowed me to create huge backstories for my character and to describe him in my own words instead of you know just having somebody in, and when I changed like from my priest when I changed him from his priest robes into like just wandering around Time town goes, which, yeah. he, which, which he never did he was always wearing his priest robes um, but if okay we'll go with my druid when he was wearing his arbiter's robes as opposed to his walking around town robes, it would change the entire description along with it to reflect the fact that, and it would do it instantly. I'm like, that is a mod I will use. Mm -hmm. You know, deadly boss mods, I don't give a damn. I really don't <laughs> care. You know. Run away, little girl. Exactly. I think, do, do you think that's what it is then? The the idea of having, having a sort of sense of, it's weird, isn't it? Because we talk about wanting to be part of the world, but it's almost as if having a bit more detachment from how the world works is actually beneficial like, as a player, like to make it game-like, you know, and to avoid the. It was my my big thing is, you know, if the game is, if the goal of the game is to maximize your damage output, to me that's a failure of of design. And I think, like you were saying, one of the ways to go about that is to not describe in terms of numbers like what what mobs do or in terms of numbers what what you are doing explicitly to players um that could help putting it in in in, in a a more prose style context could increase the, the the fantastical aspect of it um the people who are only interested in playing the numbers they won't give a damn about it, they're not interested in the game. They are interested. They're not interested in the world. They're interested in a game. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that uh, there was God. There was something you said, Locke, that 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 I locked onto it with <laughs> perfectly, and then I lost the thread by the end of it. Um, Sorry, I do that. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, just getting older. Anyone that's, that's seen my videos? <laughs> oh, me. See, I look at the gray there. Um, was no, it a detachment it, thing? It that was part of it. Yeah. Um, but I don't remember where it was going. So move on. We'll, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll. Uh, one of the that's that's the thing. They did say that they are going to allow mod modable UI. Uh, they want the community, just like the community is going to be able to build different things for Landmark, and then maybe they'll make it into EverQuest next. That they want these brilliant developers that can write awesome code to be able to uh, write some mods for the UI. And and I guess. In some ways, I think that's great. Like your RP one would be a fun one, uh, Trendane. Um, and maybe some of the other ones, like the one bag one would be great if you have all these different bags. Maybe they already have sort of a one bag. I don't know. But um, all of that together will enhance the game. But then when you add in things that sort of rate you against other players, however they want to do it, I think those ones maybe should be held back or banned or blocked or I don't know. Mm. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't no? say band or block. No, because then you're you're taking options away from the from the from yeah. the player, and that's not a good thing. Um, I don't know that I mean, that option though. That the option is offering the path of least resistance, which people will always take. Yeah. Like a large chunk of people will always take it, and I worry if too many people take it. It's like the the Guild Wars Two PVE problem, where they look for you know a certain class, a certain build. And that's what they want for the dungeon because anything else isn't the most efficient. It's not the path of least resistance. And we're talking a matter of one minute extra to finish a dungeon, maybe, you know, if you, if you build your characters in the right way. But people are like, nope, not interested. It's this one build. We're doing this with this one particular path of this one dungeon because it's the most efficient. We're going to do it again and again and again. And that's what it was. That, that was, that's that was where the connection. I think it's dangerous and <laughs> that's where I think it caught it actually ruins the game for me at least and maybe it doesn't ruin it for other people but for me I think having to be forced to play a game in a particular I have to have uh, a warrior with these three skills selected and this one ha I have to be using this particular weapon and that's the only way I'm going to be allowed to go and do these particular things those ruin the game for me I would rather be more <laughs> you know flamboyant or whatever with my uh <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> with my ideas or, or with I, so I heard people talking. I lost my train of thought. Uh, no, it's okay. My my housemates just came home and they seem to have forgotten that I do this every Friday. The blue thing's <laughs> up. That blue thing should be a warning. 
Um, but yeah, so I, I think that once you get in that sort of territory, then it sort of ruins the game for me. But maybe I, I think that maybe it helps it for other people. Who knows? Um, since the connection has been remade, um, go by all means. <laughs> Link to Real, Flame of the West, whatever. Um, <laughs> sorry, wrong game, uh, wrong movie, wrong story, whatever that thing. You're dealing with people who are playing the numbers versus people who are playing the game. And you know the, the people who want the, the mods that you know, they're going to enable them to get the highest level of, of numbers in this thing, that is the game they're playing. They're not playing to beat this boss. They're not playing to complete this storyline. They are playing to get the highest numbers they can. And that is it's that is the disparity between the two. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put it that way, but I'd start drooling if I did. Hmm. I would say part of the uh, intent of the design for EQ Next is to avoid that sort of stuff. That um, it really isn't going to be just a damage game, or perhaps we're penalized for just going the path of least resistance if you can kill you know this weak creature or whatever in three easy hits with whatever ability sure go ahead you're not gonna get any loot for it you smashed all the loot that was on it that thing's just been destroyed like there's just jibs left that you might be able to uh, scavenge some scraps from the uh, the remains or whatever but you know that thing said you kill a tree monster with fire you've got ash you know, it's gonna blow away in the wind you gotta Go grab it real quick before it blows away. Yeah, that's that's the sort of thing um, they could do to counter that sort of stuff. Is that if you want those high quality rewards or really anything from the thing that you're fighting, you can't just mash through it max damage and you know let that be that. You have to fight it tactically. You have to plan your blows so that way you get through its armor and you know finish it off in a way that allows you to you know get as much from it as possible. You know, all headshots, for example. What do you think there, Locke? You're looking like you're ready to say yeah, something. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking a lot. I think ultimately it, it comes down to it comes down to designing a game that is that is more about playing the game than it is about than it is about the numbers. Like being able to use your character to interact with the world in such a way to to bring about uh, you know the the ultimate the ultimate goal. Um, you know, rather than being able to being able to do the same rotation, do the same macros, and just have the numbers behind you. I always felt, you know, Guild Wars Two gets gets a lot of crap for its for its PVE, and I, I try I try and avoid doing that because I think the actual combat of Guild Wars Two is very very good. But I've said many times before that it was the encounter design that really sort of let it down. Like they make this combat system with all these like beautiful interactions that are possible within it, and like so many different builds and and so many different opportunities for uh, for give and take and sort of uh, symbiotic relationships between characters and it all works with groups of five and absolutely brilliant but then the boss fight is just a tank and spank but with no tank so mm -hmm. you basically take you basically take turns to time your dodge against like the big one shot attack that it does which it doesn't matter if, if you don't dodge because your friends can pick you up anyway right right so the combat system is very very good and is probably you know is probably similar to what to what we'll see for EverQuest next in terms of you know active movement being important, dodging, interaction between characters. But then what I'm hoping is the encounter design forces us to behave in such a way. And hopefully, you know, we talk about the AI a lot, hopefully that'll be part of it. But what I want is is an encounter that requires it requires me to think on my feet and be able to to use my character in such a way that I can either win or lose by my actions. Not you know not how well I've learned to fight or you know that I know the I know what the attack looks like to dodge. I want to be able to get in there and I want to be able to use my general knowledge of the world and my skill as a player and my communication and strategy that I have with my teammates. And I want that to be what allows me to win. I, I don't want it to be that I've just learned the dance. And the uh, strategy should be more than dots, 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 effing dots. <laughs> <laughs> Stop dots! Oh yes, that, more that dots. just that entire. I, I I think about all the times I did that encounter and just how annoying it could get. And even the one or two times where my shaman ended up being the tank for a moment because stupid things happened and people died, and we still managed to to win, but. 
that that one battle it's the idea that we had to keep going again and again and again because it was the gatekeeper for further content for me that's cheating content that's having a mile long stretch where you do absolutely nothing just just because you know they want to have it take that long to get from point a to point b I, i'm not into that i i prefer you know if i fight something two or three times or whatever it should be more angry at me every time it should have more um uh, uh, attacks that it's going to use against me or target me more frequently or something because it it knows me it's seen me before but I'm not really sure how much there's even going to be that in the game I don't know uh, how many creatures are actually going to respawn in full or if they're going to be replaced by the next generation or the next contender or whatever uh, in that little culture or society when you kill the, the leader Nice. Cool. Need need more data. I think so. The only quote that I've seen about it was Dave Georgeson saying, "We don't want you to repeat any content at all ever." So that's that's the design goal. But, um, I guess we'll have to see. All right. So next thing up on the plate is the starting zone. So uh, somebody want to? <laughs> what were we talking about? Months. Hey, we we're talking about so months. That's what we think about months. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, the so starting, oh the starting God. zone question. Uh, <laughs> they asked basically, uh, do you do you want to start off where every race starts in the same area, which is along the lore, coming back from um, the the combines coming back, and it's all starting in Kinos, however you want to pronounce that, uh, or do you want to set it up where you're starting off in your original racial cities, like the Dark Elves and uh, you know Halas, which Halas isn't even supposed to be built yet, so I don't know how that would happen, but you know, <clears throat> it's pronounced Quinoa. Quinoa, yeah, and, which um, I love. And when they pop open, they had the little tail sticking out, and it's just like <laughs> it's, it's very tasty. Quinoa. Tastes too grassy for me. Oh, I love it. Love quinoa. So, what did you? What did you guys like of, of all this? Who was it? Was it one of us that was saying how racist it was to split us all up and say that would be like Mr. This? Legendary <laughs> Neurotoxin? That's who it was. <laughs> Go ahead, Legendary. Tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the idea of um, subdividing by race or, you know, by groups of race doesn't necessarily, I mean, I, I can't say because I haven't read all of the lore and, you know, all the stuff that's going on behind the scenes, but it seems to me that if um, there's some sort of alliance that's formed over a short period of time that um, uh, basically... I don't know what you're showing there, Trendane. <laughs> He's showing uh, the fall of uh, Bastion. Fall of Bastion. But basically, He's saying, Read uh, it. What's, what I would figure has happened is that people have kind of grouped into the uh, the kind of combined the, the alliance camps or whatever, and that maybe there are some regional differences, but by and large, you know, you might, you might be the odd man out being a dwarf starting in a place where dwarfs don't normally start, but um or other than hooked, like yeah in the troll starting area <laughs> yeah i mean it's 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 something where i mean we we don't really know what or how far apart or how diverse the starting area or areas are going to be so it's really you know tough to say one way or another but i think the idea of making people you know explore or even fake explore if there's roads they just have to travel to get from point a to point b uh, in order to be able to play with their friends on day one because, you know, someone chose X race or N class and the other person chose Y race in class. Kron so, uh, Rastaban just had a really neat idea. What if they just, everyone did start in the same city, like Kinos, and uh, they all started in their own districts, like like Little Dwarf Town and uh, something like that. That might, be, that might be acceptable. That way you're all still starting the same area, but you're sort of racially divided by your how people you would be around where you grew up. I guess the other thing to question though is what is the 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 point of a starting area versus like a mid range town or a late in the game town because the way it sounds uh it's the further you're away from the towns is the more dangerous it gets not you know you're in the level one towns and then you move on to the level ten towns and then you move to the level thirty towns and then you move to the level fifty towns and then the level fifty you know tier two and tier three towns and stuff i don't I don't really expect that it's going to be like that, so I really don't know what the purpose of a starting town is. I feel like it's going to be a little bit more like Ultima online where you can get punked really anywhere in the world, but you know any town you could feasibly walk out of and also 
do well to do whatever you need to do. That's, I mean, that's that's the exact point from a game design perspective. I think that with with a horizontal progression system and a low power curve, there's no reason why all the lobbies have to be, you know, in the same Clean area, like separated off. Exactly, they don't they don't have to be them I mean, in, in an ideal world for me, if you know, if if I was the one putting it together, I'd say there's a there's always a big rallying call going on. That's something that we know, and it's something big and important that's happening in the world and is story driven. So what I would do personally is have a few points in the world connected to that rallying call, give people the option of where they want to start and give people a little bit of backstory and a little bit of this is what has happened and this is what is happening in this area, is this where you want to start? And they go, oh, that sounds pretty cool. And they go into it. And then from that moment, they are in that area, in the game, continuing the story that they had their little blurb of at the start. Now, with the lower power curve and the horizontal progression, what I really, really, really want, oh, please, please, I don't normally say this, but I just want, like in EVE Online, I want newer players that haven't invested a large amount of time in the game. I want those newer players to be useful to higher level players immediately. Mm -hmm. I want, I just please, I want higher level invested players in the game who are already in organized groups I want those players to be actively seeking out new new players because they want them for something other than just filling up numbers in, in their guild that's a great point that's maybe be absolutely beautiful and then you get them straight in the game you get them interacting you with them. invested community players straight away you get them in the story so they don't get dropped in the middle of nowhere and go oh my god I'm in a sandbox what what do I do what can I do mm -hmm. they're part of the story so there's things going on around them but at the same time they can always like they can always what strike if out in a what if you had a question quest that was like find five new players and take them to this rally call you know something like that <laughs> literally you walk them over <laughs> you guys don't like that idea. Uh, <laughs> it's well, then, right. then yes it's one of those things just player, just spam players. spam 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 who's new who's new are you new are you new come with me follow me now <laughs> no. okay it's not, and then once once you drop them off it's like okay bye i'm going i'm looking yeah. looking for more it's not you're not really you're not using them for anything you know they're not helping. Well, how either. how would you think that they could do it then? I like the idea. I just I don't know how they would implement it. That's what in the way that Eve Online does. Well, explain so it because maybe people don't know. You, what you just put after only a few hours in Eve Online. Mm -hmm. if you um, if you are directed in in a certain way, if you know what you're doing and you paid attention in tutorials and you talk to people, then it does not very it does not take very long at all for you to become proficient at a particular activity. Which means if you join a group early on, if you meet with people and join a group early on, they can set you on a path that means very early on you will be doing everything with them because there's no reason why there's no reason why you can't be there, you know, as as long as as long as you're with the group and you're useful to that group. Rather than you know in vertical progression systems where you know a level one a level a max level might as well be playing different games yeah you know or depending on game even even like a few hours of of playtime can just <laughs> completely separate you forever. I'm laughing because the chat yeah. because they said feed him to the dragon feed five newbies <laughs> to a dragon <laughs> nom nom. That's I did um yeah I'm sorry I could I, this is something I could talk about for hours so all right Trindane <laughs> Trindane you want to say something. Tobran? Is he pointing out? Forget where I'm going. All right, Tobran. I guess you're on the spot. I haven't heard in a while. I want yeah. to hear what he okay. has to say. Okay, right. Um, a system where... New, here's the thing, though. A player is invested always in the game expects to be the top tier, top everything, amazing. Where mm -hmm. someone's new, they're just really just trying to get on their feet. When the two collide, it's not usually a good thing. Like, I had a friend who was really into World of Warcraft, and I had just started, and he comes over with his level... 80 death knight I think it was and I'm just I'm just doing the starting area and he comes along and just says hit it and then come with me sort of thing just like you, you, you've got to go you've got to get to the next part and if their system like that is implemented I suppose this is more a leveling thing but I suppose it could apply in the horizontal progression as well but some, sometimes they just don't mix and so you're saying he was trying to rush you because he could one shot yeah, everything you were yeah taking, because he wanted yeah. to do something with me and there's just yeah, at low level, but that's, but that's it. If, if the whole game is designed around the fact that a new world, I'm not saying like you're dropped into the world, go do everything. Yeah. You know, there's there needs to be like a certain amount of leading just to kind of get you orientated. 
but you know, I'm, I'm talking about actually like being useful to that person. So he doesn't have to go. He doesn't have to babysit you. He can just be like, right, we're we're going to do this thing because you are proficient at this particular activity. You know, or like the the way the the way the classes work and everything, you drop in, you have that one class. It's very, very likely that within the first few hours you'll be able to pick up at least one more. Um so then you go, okay, what class did you start with? What class have you got now? All right, you've got these two abilities, come with me. <laughs> Put them on your hot bar. Mm -hmm. We're gonna we're gonna use them to go and to go and fight this thing. Yeah, so I guess that's all you need. You just need one okay. full action bar and yeah. you're good to go. You know. Yeah. Well, that's, um, I was going to say with Planet Side 2, one of the things that's so nice about it is it doesn't matter what level you are, if you can follow orders and shoot straight, you're good to go. Yeah. You know, join a squad, gun for somebody until you've got enough certs to get optics for your own weapons. You can, you know, by about level 10 or so, you've already got enough certs that you can, you know, certification points for people who don't play, that you can invest in a weapon or one class or one vehicle and have it be really exceptional and then just keep going with it and you know, keep that gravy train rolling. There's also a lot of players who are just, you know, they're naturals from other games. Um, when I was at E3 uh, last year, um, there, there was the... Um, uh, excuse me, E3 a couple of years ago when they were showing off Planet Side 2, um, they they were saying, or I had a guy come up to the computer next to me and he jumped on, never played it before, starts flying around shooting people down. And he's like, wow, you're pretty good at that. He said, yeah, I'm like a top 25 Battlefield pilot. And for him to be able to just jump in the beta where the dev the developers are playing back at the office who have been playing the game and just start poning their faces like it's nothing you know that that's kind of the the model i'm thinking is somebody who's talented who knows what's going on um plus or minus equipment obviously because there is an equipment factor mm -hmm. but even still you can still you know for for like brewing potions or whatever you can collect herbs that's easy to do you can boil water that's easy to do you know, Look all, all the, the real uh, simple stuff. All the MOBA games, they, they, uh, every character starts out exactly the same. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a great, um, as far as horizontal progression goes, it's really interesting to look at itemization, particularly in Dota 2. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I had <laughs> that at the front of my brain because it's something I forgot to mention in a video that I made. But, like, yeah, um, Neuro is exactly right. The, the uh, horizontal nature of shooters is a, is a great model to look at. When you when you're thinking about horizontal progression, and I think don't know what you're, what you're saying about mobas as well, the way that you know you, you do get that kind of snowballing effect, but as as characters as characters progress, it is a it is a kind of horizontal thing where you can get items that have new abilities attached to them, but you know everyone gets a full a full action bar pretty early on, so you can always be useful to your team. Sorry, don't want to carry on. No, sorry, Chendane, <laughs> you've been wanting to speak for a few minutes. You were gonna. Pipe up there a second ago. And you, yes or no? Still or no? I've forgotten what it was. Okay, man. fair enough. All right. Well, that's a that's a good chat on that, and um, a lot of stuff going on in the, in the chat role I've been watching, and uh, some people have some pretty cool ideas. So we'll see. And and one thing I should have been saying all along: we should be prefacing what we're, what game we're talking about because we could potentially be talking about two games here. Uh, you know, uh, as far as the horizontal progression, the bars, and I think that's pretty much EverQuest next. By itself, mm -hmm. but you know, the starting areas that could also have been landmark. You know, I guess pretty much everything we've been talking about has mostly been uh, EQ next. Yeah, on, on the round tables, mostly about next. That's the thing because I know I know uh, starting areas will play a role in landmark, but uh, you know, it sounds like we can move pretty freely, so it'll probably mm -hmm. be less important. I expect. All right, so next topic we're going to talk about PC Gamer is giving away beta keys. So Tobran. You have a, a copy of the uh, the magazine somewhere. Yeah. I do. No, I'm not sure where it is. Oh, look at that! <laughs> uh, yeah, lock is prepared for me because she's awesome. Um, yeah. So inside that, if you guys are interested in getting into the game and you are uh, not really ready to invest a lot of money into the one of these uh, packs, uh, you can just get the PC gamer. How much is that? Uh, How like, much is the PC? Five nine nine. It's like five pounds ninety nine. I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, just, we just got it. Uh, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't even say on the cover of this. They're too embarrassed. 
Oh, no, there it, it is. It. That's the barcode. Yeah. In time, right? Yeah, read the, read the barcode. Read it. I can't see that. What does it say? It says five ninety nine. Okay, so it's five ninety nine, and you can... And here in the States, that's probably like six, seven bucks. Probably for a mag. The thing is... <laughs> yeah, it's eight ninety nine US. Thanks, Shaylin. Uh, is uh, Shaylin, are you the druid from uh, Ten Ton Hammer? Same Shaylin? Yeah, the rest of the druid. Yeah, that was a great article I just read that you did, if that's you. But anyway... um. So and if that's it's not, not bad. You, it's still a great article. It's a great article. So ten nine dollars, and you guys can get into a, a, a one week trial. Is that how long one it is? Trial. One yeah. week trial. It's, you can try out um, the beta. It's the the closed beta keys uh, that they'll be that they'll be offering. Uh, they're they're doing like week long keys, but they do stack. So if you have if you have four week long keys, then you know you can you can use them all uh, to be. You don't in, have to make to a new a character each time. Um, no, I think it's time based. I think that's that's kind of how they're doing it. It seems to be from what I've heard so far. Yeah. Oh, so Shaylin is the same Shaylin. Great post. I think we might even reference it tonight. I think we we're going to talk about that something you later. You just on. did. That's the Druid's brilliant. I actually put it in my put it in my show notes for tonight. The differences between uh, EverQuest Next and Landmark mm -hmm. over at EQ Hammer. They've done uh, they've done a chart of the differences, and it is it is brilliant. So I highly recommend everyone go and go and check that out. Yes, by all means. Oh, so they do stack the beta keys stack. So that's great. So, uh, well, you know, I don't know. Nine was it? Would you say nine bucks, right? So nine. So forty dollars, you could have a month for the beta, or you could just get the beta. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? It'd probably be easier. Well, that's you... yeah, that's more than the settler pack. Right, it's more than the settler pack. So you're probably just better off buying the settler pack, but. Um, if you wanted to, or if you knew somebody that had the magazine just laying around and wasn't going to use it. Oh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm hold sure on a it second. Won't be, it won't be super difficult to get the keys anyway. Pause. Pause, pause. What the uh -huh. heck is going on with the what? with Twitch? Well, what? Twitch is just... Twitch? Gonna, Twitch has been screwing up Twitch for a lot of people, I think. Yeah. Uh. Um, <laughs> it's back. I wrote so many nice things about Twitch today. Well, does it have the um the information about the furniture and stuff in the uh, EQ Nexus there, or excuse me, in the um the PC Gamer about EQ Next? About the furniture. Uh, oh, yeah, the, there should uh, be the stuff that comes with those uh, special beta keys. Yeah, you yeah. get paintings for I... EverQuest too. Yeah, I, they, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, you get some paintings off. Landmark Gang Girl now Gregor and Colette. Um, the There's mage stuff, from Next, it? I can't remember their name, and the Karen guy as well. Get four paintings. Oh, well, me That's just it. confirmed that uh, if you went to SOE Live, you're going to be getting unlimited closed beta access. Uh, on the show the other day, a lot of people were saying, uh, "What? What are you, exactly are they going to get?" And the, at the uh, during the show, at least they said, "We're going to take care of you," but they didn't say what that meant. So Omid is now saying. Yeah, that uh, if you went to SV Live, you're going to be getting unlimited closed beta access. Nice. Yeah, and I apologize about Twitch tonight, everybody. I don't know why it's flaking out. Because it's absolutely your fault, isn't it? It is. Well, I still have to apologize. It's the show. I'm directing the show, so I feel responsible, even though it's not directly my fault. Not directly? It's not remotely your fault. Well, it is remotely, because I am transmitting remotely to the Twitch server, so... On some other universe, it sort of is. So. What are you doing with the paper? <laughs> Keep here. <laughs> rip, rip, shred, shred. What is this? A big fortune cookie. That is one big <laughs> fortune. <laughs> what does it say? Uh, $3,641. Uh, for what? It's the, re the remainder of my unemployment benefit in California. Oh, then it, it runs <laughs> out, huh? It's all oh, me, left in my... Trendane needs work. Get him work at Sony. He, he already voices. said I'm going to be doing the voices of every single character. What more do you want me to do? God damn it. Jesus. Yeah. You, you can also do QA. Yeah, and he's a really great QA tester. Although guess, we are all sort of the QA testers for this game, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. I get very stabby when I do QA because... It's... And you won't like Trundane anymore because you'll be like working with him every day and he'll be all stabby. He'll yeah. poke you with a spoon. Several people won't like me anymore. <laughs> But I yeah. like QA. So, oh, Omid, I that's it. Got to get Trendane a job. I know you can pull some strings, get him work. He's almost out of benefits. It's not like we have a Sony, you know, campus up here. Well, we do, but... And it's about 10 minutes from your house, right? <laughs> no, it's it's closer to... Bay Area traffic, it's closer to an hour and a half. 
Mm. But it's 20 miles, work. so. Yeah, 20 miles, hour and a half. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bay Area traffic, man. It's almost as bad as L.A. Oh, anyway. Um, it's it's Omid, Omid confirmed he is going to get you a job. Great. Thank you, Omid. Appreciate it. We got him a new computer. Now we get him a new job. It's great. Okay. Hey, you want to hook me up with one of those, too? <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 ask him to hook you up. You don't even know what the job is. Yeah, Chun Ding is just gonna show up. He's gonna be doing garbage detail. Something. <laughs> but it's a job. At Sony. And it'll be great. Alright, so uh next okay, so we talked about the PC gamer keys. Let's move on to our next topic. Uh live stream goodies. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we have so oh, much to oh. talk about what they talked about in the live stream, so um, I'm Let's must stay quiet for most of this. Why? Why? Well, actually, that makes me intrigued. I want to hear right now what you have to I say will, about it. I will tell you after we're not trans recording this anymore. Oh, because he I'm wants not to keep that new job now. he just got. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so um, let's talk about the goodies. So what are, they talked about, um, let's, let's, show, let's show some of the stuff. They actually, uh, um, Domino... Pentapod did some playing with the uh, with the game, and so this is her in the lower left hand corner. If you had not seen this yet, so she's gonna show us how mining works right now. And this is pre alpha guys. So uh, right now, when you hit the ground, little bags come out. But at some point down the road, it's going to be little pieces of ore. And she's wearing a very dominoish shirt, which I thought was very cool. Yes, it is it's very very dominoes. Um. So what do you guys think of the node itself? It kind of looked to me like just a piece of discolored rock on the ground. What do you think? I like the fact that it's subtle. Yeah, I was, I was just going to comment on that. It's so subtle, it's like nothing you'd really... You'd have to be looking for it. It's not something you just pass by. You'd have to know what you're looking for and what area it spawns in. It's not like in not WoW like where it's a sparkly pile like of rocks. The area, yeah, the, yeah. The, the important thing to note is it's, um, it's, it's not a node. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, it, it doesn't look like one. It's it's just part of the world, like like anything else, like all the dirt and rocks around it. It's just you know, it's it's part of the world that happens to be made out of something else. Mm -hmm. You know, the the whole world is resources. You you can mine, you can mine anything, you can harvest anything. Um, you know, it just happens that some things will probably be more valuable and more more useful than others. So uh, I'm just catching up with the mining animation on the yeah. screen. The stream. Uh, the stream is really <laughs> far behind tonight. I mean, yeah, it's, we got it's like, like a twenty second delay or longer. It look, to me, it looks like a minute or a minute and a half. It's pretty crazy. What's, uh, <clears throat> what's encouraging to me is the um, the actual mechanics of it look uh, very similar to to the actual uh, Voxel Farm engine, which is what it's based on. If you uh, check out, there was a new video posted today actually on the on the Voxel Farm YouTube. Which I forget the name of because I'm a bad person, but uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was displaying um, new physics capabilities. Objects actually uh, falling when they weren't supported, and um, mm -hmm. you know rolling rolling down hills and and all that jazz. Water? So it's uh, no water. Yeah, water. Yeah, on okay. the um, on on the blog they did mention uh, it did mention he was starting on liquids. Um, he he said it should be easy. So. You know that's that's all that's all it is. But you can you can check out the blog and see see what you read into it. It said it should be easy. It said it's starting on bodies of water, but it's it's unlikely that we'll see we'll see water that that flows naturally for a little while. Although it is it is being worked on within the within the Voxel Farm engine. So fingers crossed. I mean, an MMO is is a whole different beast, whole different animal. But fingers crossed, it's uh, it's something that we'll see, mm -hmm. you know, sooner rather than later. Fingers crossed. Let's go Fingers crossed. Everything should be easy. That's confirmed by Omid. Well, there you go. There we go. If that were the case, <laughs> Omid, you would have released the game by now. <laughs> <laughs> Omid's, so, in a, Omid's in a good mood tonight. That usually means something awful is about to happen. He can't be in a good mood. He's not <laughs> off watching The Hobbit with everybody else. Because he doesn't feel good. I just mm. got through watching... Uh, the Hobbit again three times this week. Again, what? In, in preparation really? for what? Wow! For going out to see it. <laughs> Wait. What? Yeah. Part Wait, one. you mean the first part? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Part one. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All, right, <thank laughs> you. All right. So let's talk about these axes, the pickaxes. So uh, here they show picks. a little bit of the picks. Well, they call them pickaxes. So 
Yeah, it's one of those things. It's a term, I guess, you can interchangeably use other way, other places. Uh, other places. Yeah. Um, but the iron one, basically they said you're going to start off with, like, the, you know, a stone one or something. A little bit like Minecraft, right? And you have to go out and find materials to make a better one so that you could f mine higher and higher levels. Yep. So That's here, the deal. Here are the stats, and uh, if you were to use this as a something to do damage. Now this is damage to the ground, so we've got 114 damage on the ground versus 519, which is the Mithrium, which I guess is a higher tier axe. Uh, I think axe. they said currently that's the top. That's the, the top. top tier. There's basically the the one they're displaying on the right. I I believe is the best it can possibly be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But and I mean, then, these, numbers, these numbers mean nothing to us. <laughs> right. Well, the harvest size does because <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna see the harvest size, um, which is good because uh, the reticle that's on the ground was the original axe that she was showing was a five, and then the one she's gonna come back here in a second, and it's gonna be the larger one. So. Um, yeah, and that also you know opens up later down the road either for um, you know. EQNL user made content or otherwise to have different shapes for the harvesting instead of just a, a sphere to be extruded out to be able to have something that's like a drill that, that does more of a cylinder or something that does pull out just straight cubes so that way it, um, it, if someone's trying to maintain a very cubey looking world they can do that because mm -hmm. um, I'm sure somebody's going to want to do the um, the retro Minecraft looking um, <laughs> plot in Landmark just because Why not? And they're going to they're going to do the blocky uh, sphere that they use in the demonstration is like the what an older game would look like. Um, I don't know if you know the the sphere I'm talking about. Oh, so she, this right now on the screen is coming up while you're talking. Uh, this is the larger mm -hmm. diameter axe, and. Uh, it's pretty impressive. You can clear out a lot of area with this. Well, it's it's done with the stats on the pick, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So as as you as you craft the different ones, you know the the damage is one thing, but then the the area that it takes and the um, uh, and my mind's gone blank. It's it's the area and the speed that you swing it, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yep. And then well, the the damage is because what they've done is make the voxels in the ground a particular damage rating. So. It's kind of cool in a way, so you think about spell effects or things like that. Um, actually, I can go back to us now. Uh, the, when you're casting spells and like an explosion goes off, if the ground is resistant to a certain amount of damage, it won't actually get damaged. But if it's not, it would blow away at the same time. So different ones like Mithril might... You need to have at least an axe that can do 400 or something to get the Mithril out of the ground. That was actually something that, that came to my mind was with the original... Neverwinter Nights, when it when they started releasing Persistent World modules and whatnot, mm -hmm. there was one I think called Anphilia, and you could, or it was Nordok, one of the two, and you could go into this mine just north of town. And that's where I would spend most of my time, just mining and mining and mining, and then go back to the the workshop and just craft all day. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. But somebody at one point came in, and then they found me with a pickaxe, just you know, tink tink going along, and they're like, "Dude, why are you doing it that way?" I'm like, "How else would I do it?" And he's like, "Take a step back." So I took a step back, and he cast Call of Lightning on it, and the whole thing just shattered. And <laughs> I was like, that's Cheater. amazing. <laughs> and then, then they fixed it, so you couldn't do that anymore. I'm like, no! <laughs> I love that idea. That's actually something that I was wondering when they were showing the live stream, is what would happen during regular combat or non-harvester uh, destruction and deformation. Does it completely destroy those resources? Or do they get, you know, rendered in some sort of collectible state? And then the other question, it if it destroys... The fight running around trying to pick them up. Yeah, <laughs> and then the other thing is, if it destroys those resources, will it heal back the exact same resource that it was before? Or if you smash up a silver uh, vein with, you know, whatever thousand damage hammer you have and just destroy it, will it just respawn a, a vein of dirt and pretty much just get rid of it for everyone like a jerk? Yeah, they, they they did answer that second question. They yeah. said, yeah, they said resources will generally be in the same area, but they uh, they probably won't come back exactly where they were before because they want to avoid people just camping the same spot and waiting for the world to heal back. First, first question. That, that's an interesting one. I think you know, for for landmark, do we know if uh, do we know if our if our weapons are going to be 
destroying the terrain in the same way? And for, for EverQuest next, like, are we going to be harvesting materials in the same way that we do in Landmark? I so mean, that, these are um, some... That also makes me wonder about the, 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 the animation that we've seen with the Iron Golem that walks up to the wall and punches through it. Do we then have you know, stone boxes that we can harvest and use for something else. I mean, that would that's a Build harvesting engine right there. Right. <laughs> just have to go forth. And just hmm. wood boxes. You just walk behind yeah. and pick them all up. Decimate <laughs> everything. Yeah, that'd be fun. Have them dig a hole it's for a you. Point, isn't it? Because if you if it was just destroyed, I mean, you know, wood and stone, you know, even brick is kind of like whatever. But if you've got anything valuable in your house and it's just like poof, anytime it gets destroyed. I think it'd just be a shame because I, I assume a lot of people would just make very bland, like, <laughs> four by four <laughs> mud huts, you know, a Minecraft night house. And I just think it'd be a bit of a shame, wouldn't it? Don't you think? It'd be a bit of a shame if all the houses were, were drab. I want mine to be fabulous. Same. <laughs> like, Disney Palace. Uh, I don't know if, if, um, if Omid can confirm that or not. Um, are you going to be able to mine in Landmark? Uh, not in, no, in uh, in EQN. Can you mine in EQN? You can. You don't. I'm I'm sure you can. This has been this has been said. You can definitely mine. I remember Dave Georgeson saying explicitly, if you can't, if but you I thought maybe you had to go back to landmark. Something, you can just get a pick. You can just get away. a pick and start digging. That's okay. what I said. And with the destructible world, it. Uh, okay, so let's talk about that. What okay. about the destructibility of the items? Because uh, some people are a little upset and up in arms over the fact that these things will not die. Like you, you, you're not gonna, you're gonna be digging in the ground forever with the same pickaxe. It won't get d dulled or damaged ever. And unlike Minecraft, which it di sometimes they die too soon. Like mm -hmm. you always had to have yeah. a bag full of axes when you're going deep digging in Minecraft. Okay, so we did confirm you can mine in <laughs> EQN. Okay. There were there were a lot of I remember when they were talking about this on the stream, there were a lot of very flirty glances between <laughs> Terry Michaels and Dave Georgeson when they were talking about yeah, this. Yeah, I, I saw think, that myself. They were, I think checking. they they have a plan. They wanted to say they wanted to say you're you're not gonna be trapped in a cave. Because that happens in Minecraft, like if you if you play survival, like sometimes you dig down and your thing goes pop and you just go, Oh crap. I haven't got any wood to make a crafting bench to make a new one. You know, I'm, I'm just stuck in the dark. Yep. <laughs> you know, this sucks. It's horrible. Like, it's not very nice. It's not a very nice experience. So they don't want people to be in that position. But at the same time, you know, that to me that, you know, I'm, I'm still holding out hope that it doesn't mean that, um, you know, the everything will just last forever. Because I think it'd be it'd be such a, a waste of a, a possible material sink, mm -hmm. um, which... If if it's going to be an economy uh, of any kind within Landmark, you know, if they if they want there to be any kind of sort of limit on resources, they're they're going to need to, you know, think about think about that. Obviously, um, I'd like to see the lower level stuff break sooner, and then the higher level stuff last a lot longer, sort of like Minecraft. Because then, if you make some legendary axe, it lasts you a long time, um, but it can break over time, or it dulls enough to where you have to go get it sharpened, or something like that. I wonder. I wonder yeah. about how, like, what would happen if we just if we just flip that. Not talking about like you know landmark or anything or how it's going to be, but wouldn't it be interesting to kind of turn that on its head? So you need the more expensive stuff to get the more expensive stuff, but it doesn't just last. It doesn't just last and last. You, you know, like you have to you have to worry about what you use particular tools for, and then at the same time, if you have a limited kind of a limited inventory with a limited amount of space of what you can take with you you know what what picks do you take do you, do you take like the very cheap slow one that can go through earth and stone fine you know but is is quite slow and creates quite a small thing or do you take the more expensive one that is is quicker and good, does a bigger area but mm -hmm. you know, lasts lasts a lot shorter time and you know then you've got your very expensive one just you know because you've got your fingers crossed that you know, in in this mountain, in this cave, there's going to be some of that special material, and you have to forego something else, and you create a sense of risk versus reward with that. Anyway, it's just yeah, right. that, go ahead. That's actually what's being talked about in chat, and that's what I was going to bring up. I'm uh, working on a, another concept document right now. Um, it's going to be hopefully released next week about um, maintenance and um, really the the composition and history of an item, and how that could be uh, a factor of the game. 
but um, the way that I was uh, thinking about it is not only should a weapon or a pickaxe or a piece of you know any piece of equipment in general um, it shouldn't necessarily break from use but it should suffer um, like partial stat degradation that can be restored or even improved through uh, maintenance and repairs so if I've got a stone pickaxe and I've been you know bashing the hell out of that thing it might not necessarily ever break but it'll get to the point where I'm more or less just swinging uh, a hammer yeah. that, that used to be a yeah. pickaxe and at that point I would either be looking at trying to repair it in some way or otherwise just replacing the um, the pickaxe part of it but you know if the haft is still good you know stick with that and those sort of iterative upgrades maybe I've got a better stone to use this time around so I use that maybe the next time the uh, the have to start in a splinter and so I need to replace that so I can you know chop down a better piece of wood use the better head that I had just created and put that on the better piece of wood and then slowly through iterations keep improving the item uh, once I'm finally up to the point where I'm actually using metal yeah that copper one's gonna take a hell of a lot longer to dull um, chopping down wood than a stone axe is going mm -hmm. to and it's also because it's not a brittle material it can actually be uh, reforged and use a lot of the same material so you won't have to completely replace the blade every time it'll just be you know adding more material if it's necessary resharpening and hey you know at that point maybe you even want to put a magic enchantment on it or something to make it last longer to do things better and if you accidentally make a head out of solid gold and the first time you hit something and it just mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not the best metal to use. <clears throat> but then you know, that you make you wonder, you know, what if somebody gets a hold of some jade, if there is jade, you know, in the game, because jade is, is technically harder than steel. Mm -hmm. you now if you had a jade anvil, it would be stronger than a steel anvil of the same size. And the way you test that is you take a steel, you know, ball and you drop it on the thing and it bounces much higher off a jade anvil that it would. And it, point being is that a jade axe head, for example, would last longer than a steel axe head. So you, there's a lot of balancing that you would have to go back and forth between stone and metal as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and once again, that's that's that whole brittle versus malleable kind of thing. That once again, yeah, jade a jade uh, anvil might be stronger, but part of the reason why the steel one's going to last longer is because every time you hit something on it it isn't causing you know small micro fractures that'll eventually shatter it the uh... The, the metal it keeps bending and bending and bending every time you hit it but it's such an insignificant amount that it's moving that you can just keep using the same anvil pretty much forever i've never heard of an anvil needing to be like fully you know decommissioned because it had been pounded to hell Right. But yeah, I mean, really we have ogres, so you know, we'll see. <laughs> One shot sp <laughs> <laughs> smashes it flat. Is this right, a shield? No, it was an anvil. It what? was an anvil. <laughs> Tobran, uh, any thoughts, Tobran? Didn't really hear much from you. Yeah. Um. Someone. I was just reading chat as we were going, and someone said maybe degrading effectiveness as it goes along, and then gets to the point where it needs to be repaired, mm -hmm. which I thought was a really nice idea. Yeah. So it's it's really good. It's like amazing, and then after a few months, it's like or weeks or however long it's going to take. It's just crap, and then you think, right, time to upgrade, and then you go. And just like the real world would, you know, it gets to the point where it does need to up be upgraded, right. like a computer. So maybe <laughs> something like that would just be like the perfect thing. I think that, that's a good idea. That's what I think. Makes sense. I mean, they they did say they did say it's not going to break completely, but they they definitely didn't say it wouldn't. Like nothing would happen to it, you know, forever. <laughs> and what Especially you guys... with, ran with random stats on it, like. <laughs> They'd just be useless. Like if you if you made them and <clears> it didn't have the maximum stack combination, it'd be like, well, that's junk. You know, <laughs> it's just like everyone would just keep making them and making them forever. It wouldn't <laughs> you go to mine and it creates more stone. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you hit, it's like, this is this is back stats are negative now. <laughs> <laughs> Make stone. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next thing. What do you guys think about the naming thing? Because uh, for those who might be, didn't see the stream, basically oh, you're that. going to have oh, yeah. a uh, a name that uh, you pick that's going to be not your station name, so it'll be whatever name you want to pick as their last name, and that'll be the last name for all of your characters. So not really last name, but it'll be like you can have any character name you want. So you could have Lock Six Time Dot Tobran. If if your last name was Tobran, you could have make a character called Lock Six Time, and Lock could make his own Lock Six Time called Lock Six Time Lock Six Time. 
or lock lock sixteen. No, uh, mine's gonna be uh, mine's gonna be Tobrin, 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 <laughs> Gobbles, Poon, Tang, Tobrin. If you die for, that'll be my surname. That'll be great. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> what do you think about that? I mean, it sort of sounds a little bit like what uh, Blizzard did with their um, thing, and, and uh, Guild Wars did the same thing. They had that uh, whole like Geek Domo dot seven seven two four. And, this, and that 7724 dis- differentiated me from every other geek domo that might want to do that. You know what? I hate that. I've just realized I hated that system. Did you? I was, in, I, was in, I was in quite a quite a large guild, and it just meant that, you know, you know people by their character name because you talk mm-hmm. to them when they're online, and you talk to them with their character name, and then as soon as they go offline, it says their account name, and it's like, I have no idea who any of these people are. Right. Now, and some of them, it's like I, talk, I, I talk to him for hours every day <laughs> just because he's mm-hmm. online. I can't even send him a message because I don't know what his stupid account name is. Right. So they're going to make it names and not numbers. So maybe that'll make it a little easier in this system. I don't know. It, I suppose it depends how visible the, the sort of the surname. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I, 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 wouldn't, yeah, uh, I wouldn't expect them to have a display name as Tobrin Tobrin dot Gobbles Tobrin. Mm-hmm. Like, actually... Mm-hmm on the screen you know that dot is, oh. doesn't doesn't feel right does it you know and people are going to want to have different last names so I, th- I think it's it's nice that they're letting people have have the same first name so we don't have to worry about that but i, I wonder how how it's going to work omid says uh, terry was supposed to post something about it on the forums he was writing a little faq for this so maybe we're jumping to mm. the gun a little bit yeah. okay I, I hadn't seen that post yet i'll have to go look for it I think is it that, is. Is that on the alpha form? I assume that's on the. It's probably. Alpha. I, I I I would guess I haven't seen the FAQ or whatever, but that it might be um, the the first name and surname kind of thing, but that players have the option to filter either the first name or the surname, so they can see just you know who the person is or just who the character is, and not have uh, both parts together. But I think the intent is to have that full uh, transparency to make sure that, you know, you know who the other player is and that there's no fooling. And, you know, if you've got two or three alts that you're using for trading or whatever, that they they know based on the surname that you are who you say you are, that you aren't a, um, you know, someone that's trying to rip them off or whatever and that everything's tied to your accounts or whatever whatever beef ensues that everybody knows oh it's you know so and so dots you know this name that you got to avoid and any anybody with dot this name is is the person you want to avoid for for trade or something i don't know you know we'll see it'll be uh coming up but i don't know i've been toying with uh dangerously as the uh surname so i can do you know johnny <laughs> dangerously last names or, ever. <laughs> or uh carlos dangerously it's another one um but yeah that that one's okay. just uh but what if danger is my middle name <laughs> right <laughs> or you should you should have a female character named levine levine dangerously that would be good. nice nice <laughs> approve true that i right, think I, my I, mine is going to be ahead. Dots, 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 effing dots. <laughs> More dots. <laughs> I'm trying to log into the, the station thing, and I, I can't remember what my hell my password I, is. Someone, I, someone called um, Omid Dariana Run Run said that uh, <laughs> station handle will not be visible in game as a default. I don't know why he thinks he's an authority, but you know. <laughs> no, Throwing out, statements. Throwing the, out uh, statements in the chat. Arrogant. That's what he is. What? <laughs> Um, it sounds very similar to the system that was in Neverwinter, the new D and D MMO. I don't know if anyone's played that. No. I did. I played yeah, I did a little okay. bit. <laughs> right. I and I watched. I don't you know guys. why I stopped playing that. I, I really don't. Um, yeah, so it's an RA game, but the naming system is a huge, not problem. I mean, it, in theory, it works well, but when you're sitting there, like, okay, what's your name? It's Tobran. K. Okay. That's not it. It's like yes, it is. And it's like oh, it's dot <laughs> Tobran dot Tobran and Erinwood. And it's like oh, it, in theory it works well. And when you see them in game and you just click on them, add to group, it's fine. And like when when they're not there, it's really hard to add them. 
because you've got to remember the station name, handle, character name, all that sort of stuff, and it's yeah. oh. I suppose I suppose then you know it becomes it becomes less about what name you have and more about what systems they have within the game yeah. that are designed to be like social and designed to you know encourage people to interact, you know, outside of a normal circle. We've talked about this before, haven't we, with the whole the whole social networking thing. Yep. Yeah. Talk about that. Oh well, I don't know. I can't get logged in. I was going to look at the Terry post, but uh, getting into Sony's website sometimes is a pain. All right. Um, what else? What else did you talk about on the live stream? Is that pretty much um, it? Congratulations to Colette. Oh yeah, Colette, yes. who's mm -hmm. the character? The girl name is Colette. Mm-hmm. That's her. Uh -oh. She's so lovely. Everyone, um, everyone is listening. I know you know already, but she's she's super cool. Yep, she goes by Dexella, mm -hmm. but her real name is Colette, and so they decided to name it Colette, name her Colette after uh, the fact that she's the one who came up with the name Landmark during one of the meetings in their brainstorming sessions. She said, "How's Landmark sound?" And I was like, "Yeah, sounds great." And, and what a lovely necklace. <laughs> what? <you>, who? <laughs> Colette. She was oh. very, very pretty. It was this. It was a fuzzy thing. I don't know. It's weird. Maybe. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was part of her call. To be honest. Was it? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong. Locks uh, losing it. Or, or maybe it's, it was... it's common. It's comments like that that lead a man to sit in a in a dark room by himself <laughs> at quarter past eleven on a Friday night. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Or let's maybe... move on. I guess. Oh, One more. One more on that subject? <laughs> yes. Oh. Humans only. Humans only. Oh, okay, launch. yes. Humans only uh, at launch has been confirmed. No other races at launch. I mean, I, it doesn't matter to me. It's going to be fun just running around anyway as a human, but... Uh, you will you will be guaranteed that I will be in first person all the time because of that. <laughs> I, I actually, I take this. I take this as a positive because if you think about it, they've confirmed several races for EverQuest Next, and they've said these are some races that will be in EverQuest Next. So why would they not be automatically confirmed for Landmark as well? If they have the character models, why would they not, just not inform over? And I would say it's because they don't want people to automatically like just build um, fantasy things, just build EverQuest things. And not only that, but remember I was saying last week, and I called it about <laughs> <laughs> making races, making player characters. I've thought about this even more, and I, I genuinely think if you think about what they want us to use Landmark for and just to, for it to be this really open forum and for us to build in any genre, wouldn't it make more sense to turn over that kind of thing to the community to allow us to build the things, the types of characters that we want to use to, to use like in the particular stories that we're telling, you know, what if what if someone wants to make like to make a sci-fi RPG experience, you know, they're they're not going to really have much interest in in dwarves and dwarves and ogres and dark elves and things, you know, they they're going to want like they're going to want alien-looking sci-fi races and insectoid things and all all manner of playable characters like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think see. Omid says Locke is pretty smart. Confirmed. Oh, God. Look, his hat <laughs> already doesn't fit. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, now it's going to mess up his hair. That's all, you know, that's what, that's what I'm saying. Like, if it was, uh, if it was, if it was me and I, you know, I, I was dead, I'll just stop there. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else want to talk about the uh, humans only? No? I no. called it. Confirmed. <laughs> Okay, he just said not lock, so you're you're fixed. Too late. Too late. It's confirmed. Yeah. Confirmed. You've got to you've got to stick by it now. You know how it is in game development. You can't take anything back ever. Ever. <laughs> ever. Once you've said it, that's what it is. You can't it. Redacted. Okay. Sorry. I was waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I, I think I was I was on a forum. I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to Q and A time. Q and A Wait. time. All right, so uh, who wants to read the questions this week? I guess I'll read them and I'll do it like we did the other show, and I pass them out because people like that. They yeah, that was, was cool. They said it was fun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, first questions for Locke. Hello. Uh, from Shaylin, uh, who is the druid from the Ask a Druid. She's asking Locke a question. How many marriage I'm proposals did Domino get during the live stream? Smiley face. <laughs> 
Oh, I love Domino. She's great and she's she's so cool. Though. I always I always I, enjoy enjoy yeah. her tweets. Definitely follow her on on Twitter because she's great. Um, and as well, I'll take this opportunity to say thanks for watching. Uh, and uh, I'll say it again if anyone missed it before. Um, EQ Hammer, Ask the Druid, absolutely fantastic. And um, they've done a piece, What's the Difference Between uh, Landmark and EverQuest Next, which is absolutely brilliant. So uh, definitely definitely go and check that out. I think, have I got it up? I'll, uh, I'll link it in chat now so you can all, thank you, you can all thank go you. and look at it after this. And she probably got and share it around. She probably got quite a few more marriage proposals after the producer's letter she did today. Very yeah. nice yeah. outfit she was wearing. Very pretty, yeah. I didn't want to say anything because it sounded like a creepy guy with a beard, but she looked very That's pretty. That's why I said it, because I'm gay and you know I'm not hitting on it. Right, so there you go. She's <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa. will focus. What? I didn't know that. <laughs> <You're>, are you? <laughs> this is news to Locke. That's that. <laughs> this, That's is, that. see, Locke, this is why you're not above me. See, this is why you keep I'm a top guy, I guess. All right. I, I would say the quantity is approximately creepers. The the number, the official number is approximately creepers. Maybe you, creepers plus one. What are you talking about? The number of marriage proposals. Oh, 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 oh. creepers. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm like, I don't see a number system there. I'm like binary. I'm going hexadecimal. Uh, you know. Um, no, it's creepers. Okay. So Malice says, marry me, Pentapod. So if, if I think she's married, guys, so you might be out of luck. All right, moving on to the next question. This one will be for Trendane. All right. Ixath asks, where does Omid get his outfit from? I want to go shopping there. See, perfect for Trendane. Why would I know that? Because you're into fashion, right? Why do you? <laughs> Look at this shirt. It's got cute little bunny rabbits on it. <laughs> I bought this off shirt woot. It, this is not fashion. It this is. is not haute couture. This See, my is... shirt has no bunnies, so yours is like way better. He's the one that wants to take me blazer shopping. Ask him where we get the damn clothes. <laughs> All right, Omid, need to confirm where you buy your clothes. We'll wait for him to type that up. I think he actually gets this question quite often. I'm sure I've seen him <laughs> respond to it twice already. And we also need to know what hair products you use on your beard to keep it so pointy like this. Cause like, oh, I thought you were talking about me. It was like, nothing. I just, yeah. <laughs> now, Locke yeah, does. Uh, Locke the Grand Vizier wax. <laughs> See, every time I hear the, the word Vizier, it reminds me of a quest chain I started writing years ago. Oh, he gets it from Locke's garbage bin. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's the all grease. My, all it's my the old grease trap. That I chuck out. <laughs> it's the grease trap at the kitchen. Oh, jeez. <laughs> nice. There. Confirmed Locke's garbage bin. Amis, okay. Amis waiting outside going, no. <laughs> <Can we> close? <laughs> oh, he uses olive oil and <laughs> shellac table, yo. on his beard. Nice. Okay, another question, a more serious question. This will be for Tobran. Some okay. of the bags feature a blue beam shooting from them instead of a whitish beam. What do you think they are? Is that from the mining video, I'm guessing? Yeah, it's from the mining yeah, video. Yeah. Yep. The particle effect. Did, did, didn't they talk a while back about gathering rare materials? Mm -hmm. I believe. I, I, I'm just going out of limb here and that's what it is. Or maybe it's like a critical strike on the mine. Like maybe instead of one, you get a five or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe that was the maybe that was the rare material that she was mining in the center, but the other stuff there was other stone around it, so the non blue stuff was the regular stone and the blue stuff was the rare stone that she was trying. So what so that makes me worry. Who who can see those bags? Probably are you the only one who can see you? Okay. If that's the case then fine. Because otherwise, you know, you have somebody standing behind a tree waiting until like two bags pop out with big blue and they just zip in and take them and gone. You know, I don't even know that it's necessarily going to be bags like that. Uh, from what it looks like, the current loot system is just a prototype. It's, yeah, it's a placeholder. Anything that you see from it should not be considered final product in any way. So the fact that there's blue beams and white beams, that's just differentiation. It's there. Yeah. It's cool. Don't Definitely worry about it. Definitely. All right. So this next question is for you, Mr. Legendary Neurotoxin. Uh, this is from Dragon Monk. As voxels have HP, do you think that if you sat there long enough, a wood pickaxe would be able to get a high-level node? 
Now, that's not something I can necessarily uh, answer, but my guess on that is um, the amount of damage that's being inflicted isn't necessarily like the, the voxels having a hit point meter so much as you need to do this much damage in order to affect the material. So if you can, if you've got some sort of, you know, crazy, you know, ironwood or something that you've made into a pickaxe, and you hit uh, some, you know, loose tin or whatever. Yeah, you might be able to make it budge. Um, you know, it's it's not really, you know, the right kind of material for that sort of thing. But I guess if it does, you know, let's say, you know, tin ore is a hundred damage to be able to affect it, and you can barely, with your highest quality iron wood pickaxe, be able to get up to a hundred damage. Then yeah, you'd be able to smack it and get a little bit of that ore out of it. It wouldn't be very efficient, but yeah, I I, I don't know that um, that is necessarily a hit point meter as much as like I was saying, you need to just be able to do enough damage. And then I, I don't know if that's going to be the same with regular attacks. Like if I can stomp the ground and do 300 damage, is it going to destroy and deform the ground? And then like I was saying earlier, are those I don't even know if those minerals are going to be available or if the the ground is going to reheal with the same materials because nothing was actually harvested from it but that's um yeah I don't I, I can't really say right now um did maybe Omid said something in chat I, don't, I didn't see it. he's talking about his Omid statue that he they are perfecting the tools to do that and you'll be able to build Omid statues out of Omid statues <laughs> Nice. It's like it's like fractal. That's all I want. All of this would have been for nothing. If there is not a giant open statue made out of them. Please, people. So all that I do, I do for you. <laughs> so when you can, I mean, like in in World of Warcraft, when you when you try to drop an item, it just destroys it. Right? You can't mm -hmm. drop it and leave it on the ground. Can you drop things on the ground in EverQuest next? I don't know. I think I got confirmed. I think I got confirmed pretty early on. That so you I'm can. I made statues. I don't know what's wrong with me. Because <laughs> what that makes me wonder, which is kind of in combination with what what you were talking about, Mr. Neurotoxin, is can you then you know dig a, a tunnel and take some thing, some item, some you know like super piece of armor that you've made, drop it in there, wait for the world to heal above it, and then. Make like a treasure a map, and give it to somebody, and they have to go and find it and dig it up. That would be fun. The only problem is, is there's a lot of griefing that can come from being able to drop things and leave them on the ground. I'm just saying, uh, because you know, while uh, gold selling websites and stuff could spell out things on the ground with bags. Um, I think in EverQuest, the original EverQuest one, you could drop things on the ground. It was a little brown bag that stayed on the ground for a long time, like hours. <laughs> In Landmark, you could you could build a <laughs> you could build a sign a hundred feet high that said <laughs> that said the name of your website. So I don't right, think right. we really have to worry about that. That's true. Yeah. As yeah. as far as the doing damage thing, like the the official answer to that is you will need a certain tier of tool to harvest a certain tier of um, of resources. So even though you know there's different ways that the the hit points of of the voxels could work. You won't be able to mine diamond with an iron pick, you know, or whatever. I forget the actual materials, but you know those top those top level materials. You will need higher level uh, higher level tools to get the materials in the first place. Like it's not it's not just stand there for an hour, you know, just click 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 or, or whatever. Like it's that's that'll never work. But the which chat is, is getting know, weird. It's, good. It's, it's it's progression rather than grinding. So. Oh, Omid's talking about not having a fig leaf, and Shaylin wants to know his actual dimensions. Yeah. Two. 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 Confirm. Confirm. Well, we're just not going to go there. All right. Next question. Uh, this is for everybody. Uh, what are your favorite races? Human. Done. So That's four. it. Boring. You made, you made me play a human, and I'll never forgive you. Doesn't make you. You just chose. Okay. I did because if you are a human and I'm a lady human, um, <laughs> there's all kinds of things <laughs> that are possible when you've got uh, um, dwarves. Just, just dwarves in everything ever. I, li I like dwarves too. My very first uh, character I was a dwarf paladin, so mm. I kind of 
I like dwarves. Uh, you guys? I, I like frog locks, not only because you can do so much Kermit the Frog stuff, but also because they remind me of battle toads. They just need to be bigger. <laughs> much do you bigger. Have, do you have battle toads? <laughs> the uh, the original NES game, I wish. Oh, that one's a classic. <laughs> we should we it's should call somewhere. Hell. We should all call somewhere and ask if they're battle toads. Sorry, <laughs> surely someone knows what I'm talking about. Tobrin. Yes, yes, Good. I know. <laughs> no, I know. Uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Trendane, what do you got? Volmain. What's that? Volmain. A Volmain as a race? A Volmain, yeah. Oh, wait, those were in Vanguard. I was going to say, um, <laughs> you're talking? See, he didn't specify what game. Okay. But at this, least it was still in, kind of a Sony game. This game. This is dwarves, always dwarves. Uh, yeah. um, obviously, Karen. Yeah. Because I, I, I get to play a human all the freaking time. I don't want to do that. Right. When I go into a Isn't fantasy game, I want to be something else. Female Karen or male weird? Karen? No, male Karen. Female Karen tastes terrible. What was that, Locke? Sorry, I was, isn't it weird that human is always the most played? Yes. In every game. Mm -hmm. like human always. It's just, I mean, it's the one you're in all you, the time. Yeah. You play a human, young man. Yes, I play <laughs> a human. <laughs> Is there any reason, apart from being able to play with um, with lady humans that look like they can, they Be can your girlfriend, <laughs> they, yeah. can get, they can get stuff done, you know? Now I'm not entirely certain that's correct because the last time I saw him playing something, he clearly had a bat attached to his face. Yeah, so he did have, he did have a his face. and he was four, so <laughs> he didn't even know it was embarrassing. It was like when someone's got spinach in their teeth, and it's like yes. um, you've. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. You, you tried to tell him, but he just. You know. Yeah, playing playing humans in a fantasy game. I mean, I suppose that they've got to, they've, you know they can be there. I don't, you know, it's, just, it's the fact that it's the most. Like I always, I don't know. Well, I like, I like dark elves too. In every MMO ever. So if mm -hmm. you get really attached to one of the more unusual races, like Karen or whatever, if you play another MMO, they're not there. You can't. I don't know. Well, I but then there'll like be other races the same with like. Interesting stories and backgrounds, and, and then you know all, all different kinds of things going on. Where the humans is always the same. It's always like, oh, the elves and the dwarves were before, and but now the, it's the, all about the rise of the humans. And oh god, we're so bloody important. You know, yeah, <laughs> there are a fair amount of games where it's like the fall of humans. If that if that suits your taste. Uh, Guild Wars 2 is more about that. But it's still, it's, but that's the whole point. It's about the fall of humans. Like everything centers around like oh. We're so we're so well, bloody important because we're average. Dwarf, you know, yeah. we're not magic like the elves, and we're not stout like the dwarves, and we're not strong like the trolls. But we're just bloody boring, and we get bonus to reputation scores or something like that. And we can we're the only ones who can go above level twenty in second edition <laughs> D and D. Was it mm -hmm. something like some ridiculousness? Yeah. It's like yeah, we only get to live you know up to a hundred years, while well, all these other races can w live way longer. But for some reason, they kept out at 20, and we can go on to exponential <laughs> heights. Oh, that, oh me, you must sip the your The human tequila. spirit, the, the <laughs> will to survive, embodied, embodied by Captain Kirk. Um, okay, let's move on. I was just going to say, before we start talking about Captain Kirk's pudding, yes, let's move on. <laughs> All right, this is a uh, question for Locke. All right. Oh, yes. When will we get a memorial episode in memory of Zaphos? I think he fell into a wormhole in one of his mining operations. <laughs> it was it was very sad. Have you ever seen Journey to the Center of the Earth? Which it's one? Like it's like that, but with a with a sad ending. Mm -hmm. uh, I I miss Zaphos. Yeah. I, it was yeah. He's, he's a cool guy. I, I I don't know if he's watching. I I hope he is, but he does seem to have. Falling off the planet a bit, so you know. Hopefully he's okay. Hey, we have no word what what happened with Mister well, Zappos. I think what happened is that he made a labyrinth with his bricks to make sure no one would steal them. But unfortunately, <laughs> yes, he made it too well, and he can't uh, find his way out. He fell in a, an obliette. He's being chased by a uh, brick minotaur. Mm. Such a noob. <laughs> brick <-tar. laughs> mistake. Brick mistake. <laughs> All right. Next question. Uh, this is for me. When is the holiday? Yeah. When is the holiday special of Into the Portal, and who will be dressed as Santa? Carrie Fisher. <laughs> Carrie Fisher, and that's next week is our holiday uh, episode. So we're all going to at least be wearing hats. 
Santa hats. There, there, we will be wearing more than just hats. Just no, we're about. nude, but hats. <laughs> With fig confirmed. leaves, according to uh, right. Omid. No fig leaves confirmed. <laughs> Omid says he's not drunk, but he did pour himself some tequila for his throat. Now you sure. must sip tequila. You know that you don't, you don't chug it. You sip Wait, it. I, I thought heard, you were supposed to gargle heard, it. Mm. Only if it's bad tequila, you chug you chug it. I heard really that high all end tequila. immediately vaporize as soon as they come into contact with Omid. With Omid, that yeah, that's true. Especially <laughs> holy water. <laughs> <Just>. <laughs> Right. So that's just what I read. read Omid likes my oubliette work. I just I watched the labyrinth and then uh, she falls into an oubliette. Tequila is gone. See, he just chugged it. See, it evaporated <laughs> immediately. <laughs> it's like the Midas touch. All right. So yes, next week is our special uh, one, and I have plans uh, for something special to do next week. So uh, tune oh, in. Yeah. <laughs> do I get to find out? All right. Uh, uh. Are we down to our last question? No. I don't think so. No. Questions, people. Questions. Um, Rabbit and Chicken <laughs> MC, this is for uh, Trendane. Yeah, I figured that was going to be for me. <laughs> Who is the girl in this episode? Carrie Fisher. Carrie Fisher. She's actually been on the show the entire time, but we can't see her because I, I ran out of room. And well, I actually, no. If we're talking about the girl in this episode, you have your choice of two. Okay. You have either Dexella or Pantapod because we showed them both. So. Oh, that's very true. And they were here. We did have a female on the show. Hmm. Just not actually talking with us. Sort of stalking them in a the corner. Chat scares me sometimes. Can it does honest. scare yeah, me. Yeah, the <laughs> chat is... <laughs> that's one of the reasons why we don't show the chat role in the in the video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and the worst one in the chat right now is Omid. <laughs> Well, of course, he's drunk. <laughs> he's like making these really random, like scary comments, and I'm like, oh god. Okay. To be fair, it's it is pretty tame compared to our Skype chat. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I'm, just, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. True. Very true. All right, we got a couple questions coming in. Um, mm -hmm. How do you think raids will happen in EQN? This is for Legendary. Yeah. How will raids happen? Um, mm -hmm. Very carefully. Um, <laughs> so it, I don't really know 100% what the raid mechanic is going to be like because I don't know what raid content or groups are going to be like how the world will respond to having you know 25 to 50 people marauding across a pleasant little forest you know what, what, whatever it's going to be um, you know it, it needs to be scalable it needs to be something you know actually meaningful and the kind of response that comes from the world needs to be something actionable. Like, if they see that your, you know, your group of fifty people is going out and fighting stuff, or camps should be setting, you know, picking up nearby and looking to go after you in mass as a big old, you know, brawl and try to take all of you down as a big group. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I don't know what kind of. Um, non-contested, you know, instance, semi-instance content is actually going to need a raid. Um, I really don't know what kind of in-the-world stuff, like just random dragon attacks, or you know, if there's Griffins. an iron, if there's yeah, the Griffin, the, <laughs> <laughs> the trolling Griffin, yeah. um, or iron golems or whatever that are being summoned and marauding around your little player town, and you have to try to get you know a bunch of people together to destroy them before they wreck the entire place um but it's it's something that could be a really awesome feature and mechanic in the game but it's really hard to say right now what what it could possibly even be because that's just so far way 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 far out right now all right this question is for tobran and Locke. Uh, this one's from. Well, it's Kit about them. I love, what you, I love what you said about the orc camps running away from big groups. Oh, I never considered that. I never, I never thought about it, and it's brilliant. It could be built into mm. uh, um, story bricks. Like if there's an overwhelming yeah. force, they actually leave. Yeah, brilliant. Let That's me so do that. Make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Similarly to what we were talking about earlier about you know getting the low level and high level characters you know working together, I was what came to my mind when we were talking about that was you know having like an orc band that is moving towards a city, almost like in uh, in Rift, where you get like a rift opens mm -hmm, up and like this little up, yeah. invasion force starts heading for something, and then everybody rallies at that point to stop them. You know, you've got some town where you've got this mix of 
you know, high level and low level characters, and it's like you, know, you guys get on the wall and shoot these damn things, and then all the high level characters go out and they're doing more of the melee stuff because they're the only ones who are going to survive with this. But the lower level characters can stand off at, at range and still do something. Mm -hmm. It was what was kind of going through my mind, and it keeps the the everybody involved with the world and the story keeps everything living and and doing whatever. Cool. Sorry. Carry on. No, that's fine. Uh, how much do Locke and Tobrin suck at EQ one? Oh my God! Okay, now that's a trendy uh, so question. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad that you asked this question. Uh, <laughs> you have, we have a video series called uh, "Party Like It's 1999" that showcases how pro and hardcore we are at playing EverQuest. So if you want to see, if you want to see some real top tier, bleeding edge progression, the best of the best. It's like watching, you know, it's like watching Method Raid in, in Warcraft or. You know, you better give me that link again because I've been watching the wrong show. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's basically. Um, oh oh oh! They suck more than the Jenna Jameson. Perfect. Is of a, a let's play of um, you know a sex predator grooming his prey, mm -hmm. and although Tobrin, you know, I don't. Uh, I apologize for referring to you as a sex predator, but you know, from my from my viewings, that's that's you know what I've taken away from it. Jeez. All right. <laughs> so, Brim, what do you think? <laughs> well, you know, of course we are professionals. We we, we do our professional things and <laughs> death and comes along with it. But apart from that, it's yeah. all fine. And you need to watch That's it. So. What, what you saw just then is basically what happens. Just imagine instead of watching us, <laughs> it was EverQuest. I, I like Omid's explanation yeah. best, I think. <laughs> Horrifying. Great. Okay, cool. And oh, the next one. Oh, it's like watching a puppy get hit by a steamroller. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, can I use that as a quote to promote the series? <laughs> that should be, yeah, it should start off with an intro. It's like a puppy getting hit with a steamroller. Oh my god, I'm that having works. that on the t-shirt. These videos are... Get that tattooed. Get on that. <laughs> I like well, why it. is it up to me? <laughs> We've been through this, Tobrin. It was your I idea. Awesome. You wanted the t-shirts. You, you said if we didn't have t-shirts, you wouldn't do it anymore. You have permission. You can quote him on that. Oh, brilliant. Cool. All right. Okay, next question. Uh, this one's for Trendane. A 10 by 10 block, about 2.5 characters, will be 1,000 <laughs> materials. I don't know why the character... How large do you think the stacks are going to have to be? A 10 by 10 by 10 block. I'm, I'm lost this question. Th this okay. this high it's gonna be this sizes. high. Yeah. Wait, so inventory you... stack sizes for harvestable materials in Lamar. Okay, this is well, only part the of the warehouse. There's supposed to be another train leaving New York. I, I <laughs> yes, a ten by ten block, two point five characters. We have thousand materials. How long will it take a train to get from New York to Chicago if traveling backwards at the speed of light? Puppy. Puppy. That's the right answer. I don't do math. I mean, math and I have not been Your on speaking math teacher, for she's years. Next to me, she's giggling. <laughs> she well, ultimately, ultimately, it comes down to economy. You don't, you don't want them to be infinite because then people just keep everything in their bags forever. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be too small because, you know, especially in Landmark, you want people to have enough materials to be able to conveniently build whatever they want. But they also have, you know, their bank oh, storage. Oh, 2.5 characters tall, he's so. saying. What? The... The height of the character, the length of the character, the two and a half of those is uh, a unit of ten. Wait, are we talking are we not, cubits we're not here? Talking about inventory, we're we talking about physical size. I guess. I mean, yeah, how, I think how they're how talking large. about how big a large Stack. chunk of that material is going to take up if you break it down and put it in your inventory. How many stacks it would take? Yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. I was going to say, because if it's, no matter what, it's 2.5 characters high, then that tells me that there is no, you know, character adjustment on character creation. You can't change how tall they are. And it's, no, no. Yeah, I, Ixath, I'd be human. I, I, now you're going to make me be six foot eight. I'll look Ixath like that. has almost has math in his name, and I think that scares me. I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the, the question. Are you talking about inventory, or are you talking about in-game? What do you mean by a stack? Yeah, and are you talking? Is it going to be like by weight or by volume? Like, is is uh, ten by ten by ten of styrofoam going to take up as much space as a ten by ten by ten of lead? What about a hundred pounds of styrofoam yeah. and a hundred pounds of feathers? Which one weighs oh. more? Ooh, uh, 
That's around around about, two <laughs> about two hundred pounds of hydrogen. I mean, like the height of a the height of a character model. Yeah, he says he sucks at wording things. A thousand blocks is going to be a ten by ten by ten square, which is pretty small. Okay, but you know the the box. Well, remember they they did say in in the video. Stuck. Stuck. That the the larger voxel size used to make things will use up more material. Oh, okay. Well, it'll be it'll be a. Uh, uh, I yeah, will say what I said before. <laughs> I will say, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. It, com it comes down to it comes down to economy and game testing and what feels good for the player and what suits you know the the economy of everything because you don't want people to be holding on to everything indefinitely because that sucks for the economy but you don't want you know. All right, let's move on oh, then. Well then. <laughs> All right, so in the uh, next question, uh, this one can be for Locke. Uh, when Hello. she dug through a resource, oh, this is from Gara2779. In the video, Hello. when she dug through the resources, she ended up through it and basically ended up on a vegetative type of slope in the mountain. Uh, so are the resources veins essentially added to the world either on top or more stationary type content? Before you answer that real quick, Locke, I did want to notice that w she's dug down and all of a sudden she was in a she was in grass. Grass. And I was like, wait a second, that made no sense to me. So I'm hoping that they uh, can fix that. But go ahead. It's the procedural generation, isn't it? It's yeah. a hole in the mountain and because the dirt has been on the dirt was on top with clear space that. above it, it had grass on it. It, it happens the same in, in Minecraft as well. In terms of this question uh, the resource the resource veins is sort of the wrong way to think about it because the resources aren't really veins in that way they they just are the world like the world is generated and within the world there are different materials it's not you know it's not a node that you click on it's not it's not something that appears and then you dig it out and then it comes back again it's like the whole world it's like the the dirt the rocks the different types of metals the gems the trees the liquids fingers crossed hopefully you know we've got buckets but every part of the world is harvestable so to think about it in terms of being added to the world doesn't really make sense within within that content within that context, you know. Mm -hmm. So they're not they're not added. They just are the world. We are the world. Everything is apart from the players, which we found out. <laughs> it's <laughs> um, it's magic hyper moss. That's why there's grassy um, looking stuff everywhere. It's just magic hyper moss that just fills in. Super mega moss. Super just, mega moss. I just got an email saying we just started. Twitch streaming. Oh. That's interesting. <laughs> it's convenient. <laughs> Should we start the show then? Yeah, let's start the show. Yeah, Might as well. well you know. it's, it's a little later than usual, but work. there, grass. Yeah, sorry, grass. Okay, <laughs> a little bit later. Us. So yeah, that was just that was strange. So hopefully they'll fix that part. Uh, next one is from Kamaresti87. Uh, do you guys think players will eventually be the ones designing dungeons, raids, battlegrounds, and, e and arenas in Landmark for EQN? This Tobrand. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> if they're using the tools to, of Landmark to build next, then surely the players can just chip in and say, "Hey, build this. Put it in the game." Mm -hmm. You know. So yes. I think so too. It'd be yeah. great. Uh, okay. This is a question for um, Locke. This is from a, a person watching named Omid Dariani. Never. He heard says. Of he says, "What classes or roles from other MMOs should we leave behind?" And EQN. Ooh. We can all talk about that, it. If you, go ahead. That is, that is a good question. Um, <laughs> it's a very complicated question with many layers. Can we go to? Can we go for another three hours? Yeah, three minutes. <laughs> we'll, we'll start, we have uh, start. fourteen yeah. minutes left of this show. Oh God! Right. The idea of the idea of roles within a combat type. If you look at um, MOBAs that we know is based on, or Eve Online that we know is heavily influenced by, you have. Lots and lots of different roles. You can't necessarily use them all within the same team. So it becomes a question of team composition mm -hmm. uh, rather than just filling slots. So I suppose the question is, you know, how many, how many roles are going to be viable within the combat system and within the encounter design? You know, are the encounters that we're going to be facing going to be varied enough to warrant using different types of roles. Personally, I, I hope the answer is yes, with, you know, with multi-classing being able to fill different roles, you know, um, relatively on the fly. We don't know how that's going to work, but whatever. You know, relatively on the fly, it means that people can fill multiple roles, which means we can tailor 
the way that we go about um, trying to tackle certain content. So in terms of removing roles, I would say, you know, on, on a kind of broad level, you want to remove anything that is 100% necessary. And then after that, you need to start looking at what is the path of least resistance. Now, obviously, within, you know, in game design, it's incredibly difficult because you want to create an opportunity space that is large enough that even you as a designer don't really know <laughs> everything that is possible within it. Because if it's not that complicated, it will be too simple for you know, the player base that have thousands and thousands of hours you know, and millions of hours of experience with these games and they know exactly what they're doing and they'll work out like that and they'll build the optimal thing. And that's it. So you want, I suppose you want to create a shifting meta. So you want to get rid of, you want to get rid of anyone who can hold threat on a mob just by virtue of going about what they would normally be doing within the mm -hmm. fight, which has been done anyway. Um, from that, maybe, maybe you want to think about removing removing targeted direct healing and then the other tools that exist uh, in MMOs commonly at the moment we think in terms of having a CC -er, so a class who is good at CC but the way that builds are being worked I've talked for too long already haven't I this well, is, you, this you, is the you thing. mentioned the roles I'm but what, what about classes are there any specific classes I mean well, it doesn't matter that's really. all cosmetic what matters is what matters is the the mechanics of players versus the encounter and what is important what skills and tools are useful to have but you know if you want me to sit here and say oh we shouldn't have we shouldn't have warlocks because Palace. it's racist against witches like, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter <laughs> like, <laughs> and this is this is what I talk about all the time but it's what Guild Wars 2 got wrong and I you know I don't want to see this you know I, I, I don't want to see this carry over into EverQuest next because it was it was the encounter design that let them down and how the combat interacted with the design of the game mm -hmm. didn't fit you know it was it was like they were on two different pages and it, and it just didn't work so you need to you need to look at it as a, as a whole as like saying you know how are these encounters going to work how are we going to approach content in the first place you know before we can start saying no sith inquisitors perfect i don't want to see sith inquisitors either yeah sith inquisitors are rubbish <laughs> i'd say World resers and world teleporters are cl uh, roles that I'd rather not see. Oh come the on! The, the the druids are standing in their rings waiting to teleport people. That was great in EverQuest One. Yeah, but it, it it shouldn't just be like, oh, I have chosen this class specifically because they're the only ones that have this ability yeah, that you know money. everybody's. Yeah, but then everybody is just going to do that because there's no class restriction. So everybody's going to be a teleporting, healing, you know, cleric, druid, something, and. That's bland. Confirmed. That's, you know. No Sith Inquisitors. <laughs> probably. Mm. They said probably. Yeah. Pro probably. Laser but that's, swords. That's the thing, isn't it? In a multi-classing system where everyone can be everything, you know, you want to you want to create a situation where you you know you almost can't be too tightly focused with what you're doing. You know, you, having someone that is just there to do one job. You know, I, I don't think for the super hardcore people that are, you know they're all on team speed together and they play with the same people every day. You know, that's fine. You can have that one job, but then for the casual people that log in for a few hours a week, you know, you're going to want to have enough kind of general use about you to to be useful to the people around you. And like I was saying earlier, with you know the newer players, you want them to be useful. You want to you want to like be happy that they're there. And you know you want to you want to be able to to get them involved as as quickly as possible. So in terms of you know removing removing roles, I'd say we should look at um, compartmentalizing a lot more. You know, letting more people do more things. Kind of you know making making everything more hybridized. Because remember, we can specialize through our own class builds. You know, so I would. I could, I, could, I, could, look. I, could I could literally sit here and talk about this for three hours. We should do that next time. <laughs> I'm not even joking. I'll get out my flip chart and I'll do. I'll do it. <laughs> That's a good topic for your voxel populi. There you go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll leave it at that, shall we? Well, then. Anyone, else, right. sorry, anyone else want to have a go at that? Because I. No, we're going to move on because we got a bunch more questions. We only got so, so six minutes left. I okay. Ruined, didn't I? I'm sorry. Sorry, it's, I mean. No, it's fine. Uh, it's, you, you did cover it, so it's good. All right, Spanner in the Works has a question. To what extent do you think people will be creating lore from EQN and EQNL 
as playable scenarios, and should there be a potential for this to be moved through t into EverQuest Next as an instance content, allowing people to actually experience the lore? That's a great idea. 100% oh, chance. Omid said yes, that, that's definitely what they're looking to do uh, immediately okay. after he said it. So, so you so can recreate confirmed. Bastion and how you envision it in your head and, and create it and then... <laughs> it's a smoldering pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah but you know, <laughs> prior to it becoming a smoldering pit... You could have it. Re you could recreate the whole scenario where you have to be there for the fall of Bastion. Like you, you do some sort of time warp where you step back in time and sort of like you did in EverQuest, where you did some of the an uh, EverQuest in uh, WoW. You did some of those older things that were prequels to the raids. So, yeah, Escape Omid Dernhold was really fun. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Uh, Omid says good answer, and you'd like to hear more at some point. So maybe you guys should, maybe you should talk to him, call him up. Okay. I don't uh, want to talk to him. Yeah, call him directly. You guys can talk. Okay. <laughs> Drunk question, question for Trindane from Nurgabert. Nurgabert. Not like Nurgabert. He's, he's a longtime fan. He's been here forever. All right. Mm -hmm. Do you think if someone starts to create his own MMO in Landmark, he'll be able to draw a map with biomes and a high height map, which can be implemented into Landmark, and there'll be a special tool for it, or will he have to do it all by hand? <sighs> I know what he's saying. Like, uh, have you ever seen, um, like, for some sort of level creators, you actually have to, like, different colors that you draw it that it would automatically raise up the, the layout? Yeah, it basically acts as a topographic map. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think it would be, I don't see them designing it. Cer certainly not at launch. I don't even see it for the first year. Um, I think if you want to create a, a map elevation, you're going to have to do it, you know, manually. It would be neat if you could create, you know, a, just like a bitmap. With with you know varying color gradations and whatnot, mm -hmm. and import that, and it just creates, you know, the the landmark, and then you go through it and paint over it with whatever material it's supposed to be. But um, I don't know. I think that kind of undermines the whole idea of the creativity aspect. And I don't even think it's going to take you all that long to build a mountain. I mean, if you no. have, yeah, it it shouldn't take you very long at all. So or, just make a giant square. And yeah. then smooth off the <laughs> <laughs> That's my mountain. It's uh, called a pyramid. All right. Next question. Um, will you uh, guys all have matching outfits soon? I guess because we're both wearing orange tonight. Of course, his is this red. Red, yeah. And his his old computer is colorblind and is putting it through at orange. Right. Now. Well, it's look. it looks orange on my Twitch, too. So yeah. Locke is clearly wearing maroon mm -hmm. on mine. So. And it's Tobin's hat is red, and so is the <laughs> Naga fin there. Well, the um, the outfits are in the post. It's just difficulty with the EU EU tax laws and you know trying to trying to get a package past the bandits in Scotland for Tobrin. All right, real uh, quick, we're, we're rapid okay. firing these questions. We only got a couple minutes left. Uh, if I build a, if I build a tower and then build a castle in the sky on top of it, and then delete the tower, will my castle fall? Uh, we we talked about this last time. Yeah. There's no um, yes or no on physics and floating objects right now. Uh, once there is, we'll be able to answer this, or you know that it'll already have been answered, and you won't have to ask. But for right now, we don't know. Uh, as far as I'm aware, <coughs> if you did that, um, as soon as the tower is deleted, it would immediately cause everything above it to start falling. Um, but that's that's just my guess. Unless you stand under it. <laughs> Doing that a lot. <laughs> All right, real quick. Um, this is uh, some breaking news. Uh, Shaylin, who has worked at EQ Hammer, or Ten Ton Hammer, right? I got that right. Uh, she's a druid over there. Um, for the people wanting Trailblazer who can't afford it, here's a top secret tidbit from EQ Hammer. We're going to be giving away some soon, so stay tuned. Oh, fantastic. Top secret until we put this video on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> um, and Omid is saying that if you delete stuff from underneath it, the stuff on top remains. Oh, well then. It's uh, good. It, it increases what you can build. Although there was the video today on the Voxel Farm YouTube channel that showed um, objects falling as if, as if they had real physics. So um, hopefully both. Hopefully awesome. you can do one or the other. That would be the ideal. Next. All right. Uh, I think that's it for the questions. Uh, we're done. So everybody on the room real quick, let's uh, tell us about your channel, Mr. Locke. Oh, God. Um, you Put can you find me. Locke six time. Uh, is it on the screen? doesn't matter. No. Uh, Twitter, YouTube. I do a show called Voxel Popular where I talk incessantly at you, and there's no way to stop it. 
Um, <laughs> but I, I do like, I do genuinely like getting into conversation with people. So if you, if you want to talk to me about anything, if you want to tell me that I'm an idiot, you know, please, please do. Um, I do a, a series called Party Like It's 1999, which should be illegal. Um, people, what was, <laughs> what was Omid's quote? That's the new tagline for the series. It's like, like a um, puppy getting run get over. Steamroller. Steamroller. Yeah. Oh, what was the one about it being horrifying? I prefer that. You said one. I've seen it. It's horrifying. That's why I said it was it's, horrifying. It's horrifying. And this show is horrifying. Um, and I, I'm also, if you can believe it, I'm the I'm uh, EverQuest Next columnist at Zam.com. Um, I've got a new one going up tomorrow. Um, so you can point your eyes at that. And if you've learned how to read English, then you know, you'll know you be able to probably get something out of that. All and, I can uh, read is Portuguese, I apologize. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm sure we can get someone to translate it for you. What else do I do? Stuff. I just kind of hang out. I drink a lot of Dr. Pepper. You can come around. Tonight we'll, we'll he's been drinking Doom, though. Like, I've been drinking uh, Dr. Pepper as well. Well, from, uh, yeah. That's about it, isn't it? My show, yeah. this, Zam. Cheers. Twitter. Cheers. Follow me on Twitter at lock 6 time. Legendary Neurotoxin, go. Yep, I've got a new uh, Twitter account now, at Legendary Neuro. <laughs> what happened um, to the old one? So the old one, I moved over to a different email address. That one's more for like personal, professional, political sort of stuff. So not really game related. So um, I'm probably not going to be using that one as much anymore because all the personal, political, and uh, what was the other one? Professional stuff is eh, it's boring. Uh, I don't need to tweet about that. Video games are fun, though. So <laughs> catch me on there. Um, it's currently suspended because Twitter doesn't know what they're doing or their automated robot doesn't. So once they unsuspend my account, um, I'll be available to follow. Uh, aside from that, I'm starting to work out a little bit more uh, of my Twitch stuff. Um, I haven't actually gotten anything official set up yet, but I'm starting to do uh, trackball gameplay demos where I've got whatever game I'm playing on the big screen. And then on the, the webcam small screen, I've got my trackball uh, playing so people can see how someone plays with a trackball because when I talk about that, everyone's like, how do you do that? that I don't even get it. <laughs> well, it's real simple. I move my thumb, the mouse ball moves, I shoot the thing, they die. It's very easy. <laughs> so it's just you know demonstrating and illustrating that for people. And the one other thing, I've um, uh, actually, I'm two weeks into it now, um, starting to write concept documents related to EverQuest Next and Landmark. I had the one on brewing. Uh, the most, most recent one was the lore languages, which actually uh, Omid revealed that he's got a whole bunch of stuff on languages going on his board right now. And he'd love to show it to me, and I'd love to see it, because I'm under NDA, because the the things. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well and the, <laughs> the next one, uh, I mentioned it earlier in the show, is going to be about uh, item history and composition. And this one might be a two-parter. Um, I could make it really, really long, or I might just keep it brief, or I might do two versions and you only see the short one. We'll see. But that'll be coming up uh, sometime next week. Perfect. All right, Tobrin, go. Okay, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch something else I can't remember. <laughs> Follow me there, Tober and Ermwood. Simple as that. I do a weekly show on my YouTube channel called EQN Talk where I just sum up the news in like a five minute video. Won't do it this week though. I had a few computer problems so that's not going to happen. Um, I'm also a co-host on Party Like It's 1999 with that wonderful man up there. So Co-host. That. <laughs> co-host. <laughs> He's the puppy that's the steamroller of the flock. I'm just the casual <laughs> section manager, okay? I'm not the main character, it's fine. It's just basically me really having a mental breakdown and Tobin trying to hold it together. <laughs> yeah, so, that. Um, I also have a weekly, sh like, I do a show on the break of Evercast as well. Um, catch that somewhere, so I'm going to find out the details for that, but I do that. And I think that's it. All right, cool. Live it up. Twelve sixteen is on Project nineteen ninety nine right now, waiting for you guys. Oh, All right, no. uh -oh. trendane, go. Trendane everywhere. Anything else you do? You do a daily dairy. But yeah, dear dairy is my my daily vlog because it's not really a diary because a diary is meant only for me. So it's and I, I've seen too many people misspell the word diary as dairy. So I'm like, screw that. That's mine. It's like rouge and, for rogues. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Or. Yeah. Um, 
all the there, Loose. there, and there, the no, no, and Loose. no's, the two, twos, and two, what? The read, red, read. Loose for lose, everyone. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, loose, that drives yep. me so. There's, if you lose something, there's only one O. <laughs> only one <laughs> O if you lose something. There's not or, two O's. <laughs> or it's an it's. Total pet peeve of mine. I can't stand the loose. <sighs> and then, then reversals. That is the quickest way to just piss me the hell off. Mm -hmm. Is Anyway. We've, we've gone I'll on a tangent listen. a little bit here. Stay tuned for the next hour. We have less the than a minute to finish this up. <laughs> Go. Into the pedantics, I love that. Um, and so, and then Into of course the I do a lot of voiceover, voice acting stuff as well. Yes, and he's now going to start working for Sony because it's been confirmed by Omid. I am Geek Domo everywhere. Geek Domo, I do uh, this show. I also do a Starcast, which is a Star Citizen podcast on Tuesdays, and uh, I play some games sometimes and put them up there. And also, I'm really big into Litecoin mining right now, which is just going crazy. So, if you're in, if you want to find out more about that, check out my channel at Geek Domo on YouTube. All right, good. That's it. We will see you all very, very soon. Thanks a lot for coming. Thank you, Omid, for being here again tonight. And we will see you all next Friday for our special Christmas episode. And hopefully we'll have some stuff to give away. We'll see. And until next time, we'll say see ya. Be careless. Bye-bye, everybody.